Neno la kobona nitayangu Imani yangu bwana ni Kristo Azma yangu bwana ni kufanana na wewe Maisha yangu bwana yote nakupa kwani ninatamani kuwana wewe 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 evening and praise the name of our lord and savior jesus christ it's a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for allowing us to come to your living spaces. Always a joy and a privilege. My name is Reverend Harun Jogina Matenge, and I'm coming to you from AIC Njoro Town, a community of people who are forgiven their sins and we love the Lord. We are on this amazing series called Let's Sing, and we are considering Psalm 95 to Psalm 100. And tonight, we want to invite you as we um, double down on Psalm 97. Psalm 97 is where we will uh, uh, be tonight. I hope you can grab your Bible and um, we can spend the amazing time together. We're going to spend amazing time together even as we look at Psalm 97. Here is the reading of Psalm 97. The Lord reigns. Let the earth be glad, let the distance show rejoice, cloud and thick darkness around him, righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consume his foe on every side. His lightning lights up the world, the earth sees and trembles, the mountain melts uh, like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heaven proclaim his righteousness, and all peoples see his glory. All who worship images are put to shame. Those who boast in idols worship him, all ye gods. Zion hears and rejoices, and the villages of Judah are glad because of your judgments, Lord. For you, Lord, are the most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Let those who love the Lord hate evil, for he guards the lives of his faithful ones and delivers them from the hands of the wicked. Light shines on the rushes and joy on the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, ye who are rushes, and praise his holy name. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for our time this evening, and I want to pray that as we come to your word, you will uh, illuminate our hearts, that we may be able to understand wonderful things that are in your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to us now, even as we consider your word in Psalm 97. We give you praise, we give you honor for this our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. Actually, that's our title for tonight's message. The Lord reigns. We live at a time where people might be tempted to ask the question, where is God in the midst of the chaos that have been unleashed by COVID-19? Where is God where everything seems to be going astray? But tonight, we want to answer that question in the affirmative. The Lord reigns. The reign of the Lord has to do with rulership. He's sovereign. He's seated right now, controlling over the affairs of the universe. The world is not on autopilot. God is steadily in control of all the affairs of the universe and, 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 and our response to this as we're going to 
In this psalm, this should make us be glad and rejoice and should expel worry and stress from our hearts even as we consider tonight the Lord reigns. So I want to invite you to consider with me Psalm 97, an affirmation of the rulership of the fact that God is sovereignly in control over the universe right now and right here. The Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. He is in control. The world is not uh, being controlled by, by chance or by fate. The world is not running on autopilot. It's not witchcraft or demons that are in control of the world. The Bible is affirmative. That is not chances. Um, it's, not, um, it's not anything else that is controlling the universe. That the Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. I hope that we can let that even sink in our hearts um, this evening. The Lord reigns. Because when we know that the Lord reigns, as we're going to see in a moment, a couple of things are going to happen. So what happens when we know the Lord reigns? Number one, the Lord reigns, let the earth be glad. As a matter of fact, those are not my words. That is the affirmation of stanza when, let the earth be glad. That a fitting response to the fact that God is seated in the throne right now is gladness is joy. We are not going to come before the Lord grinding our teeth. We are not going to come before the Lord with long faces or with worry. We are going to come before the Lord rejoicing because the Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. One of the Proverbs that I love is Proverbs 29 the second proverb of 29th chapter. And uh, it says, when the rushes are in authority, people rejoice. When the rushes are in authority, people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, people groan, people groan. In a couple of stanzas down there, the second stanza, the psalmist who affirm righteousness and justice are the foundation of the throne of God. That the Lord reigns and the, the throne upon which he's seated on is founded on righteousness and justice. We have had kings who have ascended to the throne through shedding of blood, through cutting corrupt deals, through killing and maiming, and they have ascended to the throne. If a king would ascend to the throne through blood, through corruption, maybe sponsored by drug money or cartels, one thing you cannot expect from that um, king is for him to rule fairly. He will not rule with justice. He will bring groaning to his people. But we are reminded here that the Lord who reigns justice and righteousness are the foundation of his throne. In other words, he has a standard and that standard is doing what is right. He has a standard of doing what is right. He will do only what is right and he is fair. He is just and we can rejoice. We can rejoice. Even in earthly terms, if we have a king who is righteous, uh, we are going to see progress. We are going to see people who are poor taken care of. We are going to see um, increase in provision of services. We are going to see um, uh, the king do things that will um, cause prosperity. There will be no corruption. We will see justice and people will rejoice at that. How much more do we expect our Lord, God, who is seated on the throne, whose foundation is righteousness and justice. The Lord reigns. And as a result of his reign, we do not need to be um, anxious this evening. We do not need to be worried this evening. We need to be glad this evening because the Lord reigns. You see, one of the things that uh, come to my mind 
as a rebuttal or some of the questions that automatically rise up in my mind when I think about the reign of God and I might feel like, wow, well, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Is first of all, as human beings, we are created to wanting to be in control. And particularly now, people want to be in charge of their own lives. Somebody said, I'm the captain of my own ship. And it's a very common sage in the common world we are living in, in the world we are living in today. And sometimes we feel like it's a bad thing that God reigns, that somebody else is in control of your life. But I want to remind you that God who created you knows you better and is in control of all circumstances in the world. And that your life is best left to him as opposed to you being in control. And so I would want to speak to all of us who are control flicked this evening and you want to be in control of your life. You better surrender your life to God and say, Lord, you reign. I want you to be in control of my life. As a matter of fact, some of the reasons why people don't believe in Jesus Christ is because believing in Jesus Christ espouses the concept of surrender. And many people are not willing to give up their life for someone else to be in charge. You don't want to acknowledge the Lordship. You don't want to enthrone him in your heart to be Lord. You want to be in, in, in control of your life. And tonight I want to uh, believe that even as the Bible affirmed the Lord reign, you will let him reign in your heart that you can be glad. Uh, the number two things that even as we think about the reign of God, we ask ourselves, is really God reigning when there is war, when there is chaos, when there is famine, when there is corona in the world? Is God Reigning when people are suffering from life-threatening diseases. If God in control when marriages are falling apart or when I am faced with this difficult situation that I've asked him to take um, it off my life and he hasn't done so. And that's a fair question to ask. Many people have asked that. As a matter of fact, those people who have ultimately turn to atheism is because they believe that God is not in control. He's not reigning. And tonight I want us to affirm that the Lord reigns. His family in control of the affairs of the universe. Let me ask a simple question tonight. What if we were to take God off the equation? What if God is not in control? Will that take off famine? Will that take war? Will that take um, corona away? As a matter of fact, if God is not in the picture, one thing that happens is that there is no hope. There is no solution to the problems that we are encountering. God comes into the picture where there is evil in the world and he is firmly in control. He provides the ultimate solution. And that ultimate solution is found in the person of Jesus Christ taking Jesus God out of the equation will only leave us in a gloom and doom situation where there is ultimately no hope whatsoever. But when God is in the picture, we can say the Lord reigns, that even beyond corona, he reigns, he reigns. And we can affirm with Romans that in all things, God worketh for good of those who are called according to his purpose. It is comforting to affirm that God reigns. That's why the nations are called to rejoice. That's why the nations are called to be glad. It's comforting. I have come to know that worry is actually thinking that God will get it wrong in your life. It's like I... I'm, 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 I'm having my fingers crossed that I, that I hope God will get it right. I, I hope he, he will get it right in my life. He will make that decision the right way. That's worry. And I know so many people today are worried about some of the things that you have been put before the Lord. And you like, I hope God will make the decision according to how I deem it fit. According to how I perceive it. But also bitterness is when we think God got it wrong. 
Worry is when we think God will get it wrong, but bitterness is when we think God got it wrong. And, and for some of us, we just say like, this, this thing that happened in my life, I'm so bitter. God should not have done this. He got it wrong. As far as my health is concerned, as far as like that, uh, that decision is concerned, he did not get it right, and therefore you are bitter. But God calls us to rejoicing and gladness, to knowing that he reigns, that righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. And we can say, the Lord reigns. And therefore, my heart tonight, be joyful, be glad. God got it. He is in control of the universe. One child was praying. And when he was praying, he, she was a little child and, and prayed that God, those simple prayers that kids pray, he said, God, I want you to take care of daddy. Oh, God, take care of mommy. And go, oh God, take care of uh, myself. And the baby finished by praying, God, take care of yourself. Because if you don't, we are doomed. We are doomed. And I pray that we can have that simple faith like that child. The Lord reigns. He's in control. And therefore, we don't have reason to even worry when he's in control. When he's in control. One of the things that I look at in this psalm is how God, who is in control, is described. He's described as um, cloud and thickness and thick darkness around him. In other words, God is not always very clear. Uh, actually, that picture of cloud and thick darkness and fire going before him and lightning, I think his language that is taken from Exodus 19, verse 16 and 19, when God appeared at Mount Sinai, and this is what the Bible says, what happened. So it came about Exodus 19, verse 16 and 19, so it came about on the third day when it was morning that there were thunders and lightning flashes and a thick cloud upon the mountain and a very loud trumpet sound so that all the people who were in the camp trembled and Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was all in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire and its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain quaked violently. In other words, there was an earthquake. When the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, when the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered him with thunder. I think that's where the psalmist is getting the language of... Um, describing the God who reigns here. And, and I think cloud and thickness talks about how God is transcendent, how God is removed from us, and how we actually need to come before him in fear and trembling. Sometimes we don't see him clearly. And that's why many a times we do not affirm the fact that he reigns because he is surrounded in darkness he is, um, he is engulfed in darkness. It's like he's mysterious. We cannot see him clearly. And right now, honestly, if you ask me, what is God doing with the whole program of COVID-19? I'll tell you, beat me. I have no idea what's happening right now. He, he's engulfed in darkness. And just because you don't understand the purpose of God and what he's doing in your life, does not affirm, does not actually lead us to conclude he does not reign. He is in darkness, and, and we need to come before him in trembling. I remember one time I had a young preacher who was preaching, and he kept referring to how he had these several meetings with Jesus Christ, and how Jesus Christ has to comfort, uh, consult him for this and that decision. And in my mind, I was like, if Jesus has to consult you for this and that decision then he's not the Lord. You are his Lord. I, I mean, we are to come before him casually and lightly. We are to come him in fear and trembling. There is smoke, lightning, fire, and thunder, and earthquake before the Lord who reigns. As a matter of fact, if I was to be even taken before those who are rulers of this world, I will not come so casually before them. 
I will come with fear. I will have to plan what I will have to say. I will not come lightly and, and, and casually. I will come in fear and trembling. And before the Lord who reigns, yes, we are to come with joy because we trust his rulership. He, where he's leading the universe, we can trust that. But yes, we are to come with fear and trembling. There is thunder, there is lightning. There is fire that goes before him. The Lord reigns, let the earth be glad. Number two, the Lord reigns, and verses 7 tells us, the idolaters should be ashamed. Verses 7 says, all who worship images are put to shame. Those who boast in idols worship him, O ye gods. Zion hears and rejoices. The villages of Judah are glad because of your judgments, Lord. For you, Lord, are the most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The first implication of the fact that God reigns is that the earth, the peoples, should rejoice. You should be glad this evening. And I hope that this will gladden your heart this evening. The second implication of the reign of God is that those who worship idols will be put to shame. Those who worship idols will be put to shame. They will be put to shame. And I can imagine the picture here. That there is God who is firmly in control over the universe. He is running the affairs of the universe. Nothing in this universe is happening without his express uh, permission and authority. Is, is driving everything. He is preserving Everything that is happening, he reigns and he rules. And yet somebody has the audacity to take something he created like a tree, cut it down, shape it into an image, something that doesn't hear or see, and worship. And worship is like trying to provoke the wrath and the anger of God. It, 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 it actually beats me that we can worship idols but the fact that he reigns, the fact that he's firmly in control, you expect that those who are idolaters will be put to shame. Now, how do you know you're an idolater? I have a very simple test for you. 100% sure. It can confirm to you whether you're an idolater or not. And this is the simple test that you can do. The test is, are you worshiping God? If not, you're an idolater. Let me tell you, there are only two categories here. Those who worship God and those who worship idols. Maybe you have not shaped anything. You have not carved an image. In your space, in your bedroom, there is no an image that we can go and find that you worship. The idols of today are much more sophisticated and subtle than the idols of the Old Testament. They are not like the Dagon or the Baal or the Asherah poles of the Old Testament. The idols of today are more savvy. They are money. They are sexual pleasure. They are fame, power, and those things that you might not think they are gods. But I want to tell you, if you're not one who is worshiping God in truth and in spirit... Hear it from me here and now. You are an idolater. And a time will come that those who worship idols will be put to shame. You will be put to shame. Now, as we were talking about the attributes of God who reigns, you notice in verses 3 that fire goes before him and consumes his foe on every side. In stanza 3, that fire goes before him and consumes his foes on every side. That this God who reigns, he will make sure that everybody will affirm the fact that he reigns. Reigns. Some will do it gladly and some will do it by force. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He will vanquish. He will vanquish those who do not admit his reign. His reign. The idolaters will be put to shame. That will happen. They, that will happen at one time. He will judge and his judgment will put idolaters to shame. Um... 
I think um, a couple of days was 9-11, where we were commemorating the terrorists. Not actually commemorating, but there was memorial for the terrorists who bombed the Twin Towers of um, uh, New York, and um, that led to killing of about 2,900 people. You remember that terrorist attack 20 years ago. And, um, and after that, you remember the war in Afghanistan, and uh, immediately the U.S. government uh, put it out there, wanted, dead or alive, Osama bin Laden. Everybody knew that that was the number one enemy, and a prize had been put on his head, and they were trying to hunt him down and bring him to book. That didn't happen during the reign of Bush. It happened during the reign of President uh, Obama. And you remember that night as Obama came out on the corridors of White House and announced that today I can report to the American people and to the world that an operation was conducted that killed Osama bin Laden. And within 30 minutes of that announcement at night, people had poured out around um, the White House celebrating that he has been brought to book the enemy. <laughs> You know, some people imagine that when God will um, bring shame to idolaters, that those who are saints will actually be offended. As a matter of fact, they will not be offended. We will be shouting to the top of our voice, justice has been served. Yes, they deserve it. They were idolaters. How dare somebody can worship a tree? How dare somebody can worship a carved image? and not acknowledge the one who rules over the affairs of the universe. Don't spit on the authority of God. Don't come with your crunched hands on the face of God. Admit that he reigns. Bow down in sovereignty before him. The Lord reigns. The adulterers will be put to shame. And lastly, the Lord reigns. The Lord reigns. Let those who fear him hate evil. Verses 10 says, Let those who love the Lord hate evil, for he guards the light of his faithful ones. He delivers them from the hands of the wicked. Light shines on the rushes and joy on the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, all ye rushes, and praise his holy name. The first implication of the reign of God is that we are to be glad. The nations have to be glad. The second implication of the reign of God is that the idolaters will be put to shame, but not those who fear the Lord. Those who fear the Lord actually will be glad, as compared here to Zion in verses 8, that hears and rejoices and be glad. But the third implication is that if the Lord reigns, those who fear him should hate evil. Because the Lord reigns and because the Lord hates evil is a logical conclusion, is a logical uh, outcome of the fact that the Lord hates evil, that then we should also hate evil, should hate evil. The Lord reigns. He hears the prayers of the saints. He's able to bless. And as a result, because he's in control, we should love what he loves. Because he blesses obedience, we should be obedient because we know he's firmly in control. I want to tell you, I have seen how people behave around a person of authority. They like doing what that person does. They like pleasing that person because we know he's in authority and he can order certain things in their lives. And if we believe that God is in authority, if God is reigning, we better love what he loves. He loves righteousness. And as a result, you can see the blessings that comes to the people who hate evil, who hate evil. They say there are, there are three blessings here. The number one blessing that is spelled out of those who hate evil is that he safeguards their souls. He delivers their souls. Um, um, NIV says he guards their lives. But I love the King James that says he guards their souls. And above everything else, if there is a part of you that you need to pray that God would guard above everything else is your soul, that God... If my body be destroyed, don't let my soul go astray because our soul can easily lose eternity. 
My body will die once here on this universe. I can lose my life here on earth. But if I lose my soul, I've lost it for all eternity. And the blessing that is promised here is that if we know the Lord reigns and if we fear the, the evil as a result, God will safeguard my soul. One of the things I really fear is my heart. Like the singer sang, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the Lord I love. And I want to commit my soul before the Lord for his upkeeping. I cannot trust myself. I mean, there are so subtle temptations in the world we are living in today. I cannot trust my soul to my upkeeping. I want God to deliver my soul. And that's one of the blessings he promised. He will guard the souls of those who acknowledge his rulership, his reign, and consequently, they fear evil or they shun evil. Number two is that he will give them guidance. Verses 11 says, light shine on the rushes. He will, he will just give them guidance. He will lead them. And right now, you can be even contemplating a um, couple of decisions and which is the right way. And God will give you light if you acknowledge his reign and if you shun evil. And lastly, he will give them gladness. He will make them be glad. He will give them joy. He says, rejoice in the Lord, those who you are righteous. Praise his holy name. In this day, that worry is almost reaching an epidemic level. God can make your heart glad by you knowing that he reigns. May God bless us. Amen. The Lord reigns. I want this fact to soak in our mind this evening. Because if it soaks in our mind, we will be able to move from here with gladness. And particularly if you feel like you're a bit stressed out about issues in life and how things are going, uh, may you tonight be com uh, comforted by this fact. The Lord reigns. See, we are getting into a political season as a country, Kenya, and I know we are so passionate about uh, politics, and um, uh, some people would want this candidate to be in this office or that candidate to be in that office. And if you ask people, why would you want this candidate to be in this office? They believe that if this candidate is in this office, he will do this and that and that for us as people. We will have a good reign. But tonight I want to tell you that God is not running for office. Uh, God is not running for God. God is actually God. He is seated on the throne, and the foundation of his throne is righteousness and justice. And I want to tell you, because he's a just God, he, we are going to be glad in our hearts. We are going to be glad in our hearts, because when the righteous rule, people are happy. I wouldn't know of a better person that you can enthrone to be king in your life right now as God. I pray that you would embrace God as he is, and that you can affirm he reigns, he reigns um, over your life. And tonight we may, we may just ease off and just say, let us be glad. Let the country be glad. Let the people be glad that the Lord uh, reign. And one final thing I just want to, let, uh, to ask of you. Please, I want to pray that you'd enthrone him. I hope you are not a person who is a control freak and you don't want God to um, lead and direct your life. I, I pray that you would surrender your life. You may not be that category of people who feel like, I don't want to let control go. I want to be firmly, firmly in control. You are not firmly in control. As a matter of fact, I heard this story of a guy who was seated on a plane so tight and he didn't want to move for the whole time. Even when they were serving meal, he would not receive meal. He was just uptight the whole time. And one of the person who was sitting next to him asked him, why, well, is something wrong? And he said, you have no idea. I am holding this plane by my sheer willpower. And I'm sure the person next to him thought like, this guy must be crazy. You are not the one who is running the universe. Let God run the universe. Let him reign 
so that you may be glad this evening. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much for finding time to join us. My name is Reverend Harun Juguna. I'm coming to you from AIC in Joro Town. And if you are ever in our area on a Sunday morning, would love to have you in our church. Our services are at 9 in the morning and at 11. And please stop by. Would love to welcome you to one of our services. Again, if Moment of Truth is a blessing to you, please consider sharing it on your media, on your social media platform. But also, please, would you consider giving to this program through the pay bill number on the screen right now? Wow. Until next time, my name is Reverend Harun Juguna. Let me conclude with a word of prayer. Lord, I pray that you bless our, my viewers tonight. Be with us even as we wait for next week. We give you praise for the opportunities we have to share your gospel and to make the world be glad by what you are doing. We give you praise tonight because we are acknowledging your rulership. We are surrendering to your rulership tonight. We are affirming the Lord reign. Reign over all circumstances. Reign over all things in our life because we acknowledge your reign tonight. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mina tamani kuwana wewe 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 Wana we nuliwe, ya wabudiwe. Sifazo tenye zako, ewe mwanyezi. Roho ya nubwana, inatamani kuwana wewe. Babazo ya nubwana, nyotena kupakwa ni. Ninatamani. Kuwana wewe, kuwana wewe, kuwana.